Hello everybody and welcome to my talk about potentials for material card validation using an innovative tool. My name is Matthias Eder. I'm a research associate at the Chair of Metal Forming and Casting at the Technical University of Munich. This work I realized with my co-workers Maximilian Gruber, Nico Manopolo from Autoform and Wolfram Volk. Before presenting the innovative tool called MOOC test, I want to motivate my talk. After that, I want to show you some experimental and numerical investigations before summarizing my talk and giving a brief outlook. So let's start with the motivation. There is a variety of different material models for the use in sheet metal forming. For example, the flow curve, the yield locus and its hardening behavior, the strain rate dependency, and if we think about the failure, we have the linear and nonlinear forming limit. Simulation inherently contains different sources of inaccuracies. For example, in representing the geometry, in modeling occurring friction, or also in modeling material behavior. For a meaningful numerical representation, it is essential that the, especially the deterministic part of the error is in a reasonable range. Therefore, a validation of the used models is essential to assess the qualities of the models. In the literature, there are various approaches to validate material models, but in general, the idea is always the same. On the one hand, we have experiments that do not exclusively represent a calibration point of the model, and on the other hand, we have a numerical representation of the test using the model under investigation. If we combine these two databases, this is the basis for a validation of existing material models. So let me introduce you the innovative tool called MOOC test. MOOC stands for Material Under Control. First of all, we have predefined some requirements a validation experiment should fulfill. For example, a continuous collection of data over time. This allows a comprehensive validation of material models over a wide range of hardening. Furthermore, a low friction influence. This means that the test is not dominated by friction and so is dominated by the material behavior and I can assess the model quality for material in detail. A complex strain distribution allows a comprehensive validation of the material models. And finally, a small number of tests and a simple test conduct reduces the effort for the validation of material models. Now let me introduce you the MOOC test in comparison to these five predefined requirements. As a testing machine, we used the sheet metal testing machine BUP1000 from Zwickerel, where the MOOC test is located in this area. We use a DIC system, RMS from GOM, where a quasi-continuous collection of data over time in form of coordinates and strain on the sheet surface is possible. So we have the first predefined requirement fulfilled. Here you can see the tool of the MOOC test consisting of die, blank hole and punch. And in in order to reduce the friction, we use a locking bead, so the draw-in of the specimen is limited and the uh, experiment is not dominated by friction. The shape of the tool resembles a butterfly, which produces complex strain distributions, and so we have the next two predefined requirements fulfilled. And finally, let's take a look at the used test geometries as a test the first geometry, we used a rectangular specimen with a width of 70 millimeters, which produces stresses and strains around the uniaxial area. As a second specimen, we used a width of 110 millimeters, where the stresses and strains lie around the plane strain area. And finally, we have a 230 millimeter specimen, a full specimen, where the stresses and strain lie around the biaxial area. If we rotate the specimen regarding the rolling direction, it is possible to generate data on the whole yield surface 
for a comprehensive validation of material models in sheet metal forming. We only use rectangular specimens, so the specimen preparation is really easy by using a guillotine shear, for example. And so we can summarize that we have a small number of tests and a simple test contact at the MOOC test. So we have all five predefined requirements fulfilled in using the MOOC test. Now let me show you some experimental investigations. In this video, you can see the experimental DIC results for the 110 millimeter specimen of the interstitial free material HC260Y with a sheet thickness of one millimeters. On the left, you can see the resulting stain distribution and on the right, the corresponding coordinates in the visible area of the sheet. The data is colored according to the strain ratio and furthermore, some characteristic points are marked. Here are the edges of the punch, the middle of the punch and the flange area. So it's possible to connect these two, uh, these two plots and we can see the V-shape that uh, results for this specimen is mainly formed by the corners for the right branch and the flange area for the left branch here. If we summarize the results for the interstitial free material, we can see for the 70 millimeter specimen a resulting strain distribution on the left, on the, somewhere around the uniaxial tension region that forms a W shape. So the, so the question arises, where does the W shape come from? And so we take again a look at the, at the characteristic points and we can see that the left branch is formed mainly by the flange area and the middle branch is formed in the top of the punch and the corners of the punch form the right uh, branch of the strain distribution. <clears throat> As the next specimen, we have the 110 millimeter specimen with two branches. We have seen it already in the video where the right branch is formed by the corners and the left branch somewhere in the flange area. And finally, we have the 230 millimeter specimen, which lies on the, on the biaxial area of the strain space. And the strain um, distribution is formed mainly by the corners of the punch and the middle of the punch area here. <clears throat> so we can see that the characteristics of the resulting strain distributions are caused mainly by the characteristic shape of the tool. So the question arises whether the shape of the strain distribution depends on the material property, which is a very important point for a material card validation. And so we tested some more materials to investigate this, which you can see here on this slide. On the left, we have the interstitial free material we have already seen on the slide before. And furthermore, we tested a micro alloy steel HC 340 LA and finally on the left here we see the aluminum 5083 we've tested also. And if we compare the two steel materials we can see for the 70 millimeter specimen in blue that we have the W shape here for the interstitial free material but we have only a V shape for the microalloyed steel. So the third branch degenerates to a uh, second branch here and this V is mainly formed by the flange area as well as the corner of the punch. The same effect we can see for the 110 millimeter specimen here in green. So we have here at the interstitial free material a V shape and only one branch here for a micro alloyed steel which is formed here by the corners of the punch. And finally the biaxial full specimen you can see that the strain distribution looks similar in both materials. And finally, if we take a look at the aluminum material, we can see a totally different strain distribution. Uh, for a, especially the 70 millimeter specimen lies somewhere around the plane strain state. And uh, yeah, the biaxial lies on the right here. We can summarize that we have significantly different strain characteristic for the investigated material, which is an important point for uh, material card validation. 
As a next step, the question arises, what is about reproducibility? And so we take a closer look to the microalloyed steel HC340LA. We can see here one repetition each for each uh, specimen geometry. And if we do several times the same test, we can see that the strain distribution hardly changes. And so we can summarize that the reproducibility of the test is really good. Finally, we can summarize the experimental side of the test in form of that we have reproducible tests and that we have varying results for different materials. And these two points are really important as a basis for material card validation. So let's take a look at the next step, the simulation side to the numerical analysis. As a basis for the numerical analysis, we used a material model for the microalloyed steel HC340LA, and we used AutoForm with a um, yield locus description BBC 2005. This uh, yield locus model we have based on uniaxial tensile tests and a biaxial hydraulic bulge test. In order to investigate the sensitivity of the model parameters regarding the resulting strain distributions, we took three uh, parameters of the model um, to investigate this. We used here the uniaxial anisotropic coefficient and the biaxial anisotropic coefficient, as well as the curvature exponent for the BBC model M. So let's start with this um, exponent M for the BBC uh, model. Here we have a change from m equal 4.5 to m equal 8. Here in blue the 4.5 and in green the m equal 8. Where we can see that the curvature of the whole stress space is changed. And here we can see the resulting strain distributions. On the left we have the 70 millimeter specimen. In the middle we have the 110 millimeter specimen. And finally on the right we have the 230 millimeter specimen. For a reason of comparability, we have in black dots the experimental results and the numerical results in the form of hull curves in green and uh, blue. For the 70 millimeter specimen, we can see that we have a really significant change in strain distribution. Also for the 110 millimeter specimen, changing the M value, of the BBC model, the strain distribution changes significantly and finally for the 230 millimeter specimen we hardly see any change of the strain distribution here. As a second parameter we changed the RP value, the biaxial anisotropic coefficient which changes the slope of the yield locus in the biaxial area. Furthermore, we can see that in the uniaxial area, hardly any change of the model is visible. We changed the RB value from 0.6 in blue to 0.96 in green. And so let's take a look at the uh, results. And we can see that we hardly see any change for the 70 millimeter specimen if we change the biaxial anisotropic coefficient, but we see a significant change for the full specimen with a width of 230 millimeters here. For the 110 millimeter specimen, we also have a dependency of these parameters. The final parameter we investigated here is the R0 value, value the uniaxial anisotropic coefficient, which changes the slope of the yield locus in the uniaxial direction, and we see hardly any change in the biaxial direction. We changed the parameter from 0.5 to 0.85. And the results are here in the following. If you take a look at the 70 millimeter specimen, we see that we have a significant change of the strain distribution in form of a clockwise rotation of the strain distribution if we change the R0 value. We see a slight change here in the strain distribution for the 110 millimeter specimen and we see no change in the strain distribution for the full specimen here. So let me summarize these investigations. 
we can say that the numerical analysis is sensitive to changes in model parameters. And furthermore, a very important point is that we have varying results for changing different model parameters. So let me sum up my talk and give a brief outlook. In my talk, I have presented an innovative tool called MOOC test, where it's possible to fulfill all the five predefined requirements. First of all, it's possible to continuously collect data over time. Furthermore, um, the special geometry of the test produces complex strain distributions. By using a locking bead, we have a low friction influence and the test is not friction dominated. And finally, we have a simple test conduct and a small number of tests necessary for the validation. Regarding the, regarding the potentials of material card validation, we can summarize that at the experimental side, we have reproducible tests and varying results for different materials. And for the numerical analysis, we have sensitivities to changes in model parameters. And if we change different model parameters, we have varying results for the strain distribution. This is a basis for a comprehensive validation of material models. And so we have uh, really good potentials for material card validation using the MOOC test. But of course, it's not only possible to assess the quality of existing models, but we can use also this data for even improve the material models by using an optimization strategy. So um, if we have set up a strategy for optimization, we have also the future potentials not only to optimize the yield locus description, but also the hardening behavior or the flow curve of the, of the material model. Furthermore, we can investigate the strain rate dependency or also regarding the failure, we can investigate the linear and nonlinear forming limit. So finally, I would thank you for listening to my talk and I'm looking forward for an interesting discussion about this topic. Thank you very much.